So I want all you people out there, I want you to get your brother, get your sister, get your daddy, get them all around the TV. Because you think now I witnessed something right here on TV today, baby. Terry Gordy was a professional wrestler from Chattanooga, Tennessee, who was born in 1961. A standout high school football and baseball player at Rossville High School, Terry dropped out at the age of 14 after getting into trouble with the law and being bailed out of jail by his uncle. He began his pro wrestling career initially for the International Wrestling Association and later would form the fabulous Freebirds with Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts who was added to the group. Along with the dozens of titles he won throughout his career, arguably one of the high points was becoming the very first Universal Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion and holding the belt for six months. During his career, he would make stops in Georgia Championship Wrestling, Memphis, Mid-South Wrestling, WCCW, All Japan Pro Wrestling, WWF, WCW, USWA, Global Wrestling Federation, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, ECW, International Wrestling Association in Japan, and War. During a flight to Japan in 1993 for one of his frequent All Japan tours, Terry allegedly took approximately 50 pain pills, resulting in an overdose on the flight that left him in a coma. It would be five days before he regained consciousness, unfortunately with permanent brain damage. At 6'4 and almost 300 pounds, Terry never had a problem handling himself either in or out of the ring, but this incident, along with years of drug abuse, heavy drinking and taking chair shots to the head, would prove to take a toll on his mental and physical health. Those close to him said he was never the same. He wrestled his last match returning to IWA Japan on February 4, 2001. He ultimately passed away later that same year at the age of 40, leaving behind a career spanning 27 years. He was inducted into the Southern Wrestling Hall of Fame, the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame Museum, and the WWE Hall of Fame as part of the fabulous Freebirds. This is the story of Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Terry Gordy was born on April 23, 1961 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He attended Rossville High School where he was a standout football and baseball player. He dropped out of high school following his freshman year. He was a big wrestling fan growing up watching NWA out of Tennessee run by Nick Goulas and Roy Welsh. Watching stars such as Jackie Fargo, Tojo Yamamoto and the interns. He began wrestling in early 1974 at the age of 14 by lying about his age. Trained by Don Carson and the Mongolian stomper Archie Goldie in Knoxville. He started out in Lakeview, Georgia as one of the mass scavengers. Throughout 1974 and most of 1975, he would wrestle mostly tag team matches under a mask, worried that someone might recognize him and jeopardize his career because he was technically still a minor. One of his first televised matches was against veteran Big Cat Ernie Ladd sometime in 1975, known as Terry Mecca. He would also form a tag team with Gino Brito, facing teams such as the Mongols. In mid-1976, he returned to his hometown of Chattanooga, working for Lou Thez, and again would perform under a mask, this time as Mr. Wrestling 3, but would also use the name Terry Meeker, occasionally teaming with his kayfabe brother, Jerry Meeker. In June of 1977, he would then travel to Nova Scotia, where he would feud with David Schultz, but before the end of the summer, he would return to Memphis and would continue his series of matches with Dr. D and would also tag a handful of times with the young Robert Gibson and Norvell Austin. 
According to Terry, he didn't last long because of his lack of interview skills, but before the year was up, he would relocate to Mississippi working for the great Mephisto in his international championship wrestling promotion, making $40 a night working six days a week. On January 14th of 1978 in Greenwood, Mississippi, he beat Bill Ash to win the vacant ICW Mississippi title in the tournament final. In February of that year, he met Michael Hayes, who is known as Lord Michael Hayes. Even though he thought Hayes was arrogant and cocky, they became partners. They would wrestle their first match as a tag team on February 16th against the Mongols, which would be the start of their lifelong friendship. When Terry was given a $10 raise per night and Michael wasn't, they both left in December of that year. Terry, still Mississippi heavyweight champion, went back to Memphis to work for Welsh and Goulas. Michael Hayes would now be known as Pretty Boy Michael Hayes, and they officially became the Fabulous Freebirds, and after a short time became NWA Mid-America Champions, feuding with the Mexican Angel, Dutch Mantel, as well as Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee, selling out the Mid-South Coliseum regularly. The Freebirds became extremely popular, and at the time were the only wrestlers using ring entrance music. Initially, Terry thought the music had no place in wrestling, but Hayes talked him into it. They would then head to Louisiana, where Bill Watts was running shows. They would spend half of 1980 feuding with Buck Robley and the Junkyard Dog. One of the most popular angles was when Michael Hayes blinded Junkyard Dog with the Freebird hair cream. Bill Watts over the years would fire Terry several times for being late and drinking too much. Bill Watts thought Michael was a better talker than wrestler, so he teamed Terry with Buddy Roberts and Michael would manage the duo. By the end of 1980, they ended up in Georgia as they were looking for international exposure and the territory was being shown on TBS, alongside stars such as Austin Idol, Tommy Rich, and Dusty Rhodes. According to Terry, Ole Anderson came up with the Freebird rule, which allowed any two members of the three-man team to wrestle in the match, as Michael was sick of just doing all the talking and wanted to take part in the match. Throughout the first half of 1981, the Birds had some of the biggest feuds and the most legendary matches in the history of GCW. In one of the famous matches shown on WTBS, now known as the Pile Driver match, Terry Gordy gave Ted DiBiase four consecutive pile drivers, which led DiBiase being taken away in an ambulance. During their time in Georgia in early 1982, Terry would form a team with Jimmy Snuka and turn on Michael and they briefly feuded. With Hayes as a hero and Gordy as a villain, Hayes and Gordy eventually patched up their differences and reformed the Freebirds as a duo in the Dothan Farm Center. They feuded with Ole Anderson and Stan Hansen over the NWA World Tag Team titles throughout the summer of 1982. After a brief stint in Pensacola in the Gulf Coast Territory and returning to Georgia for a few months, in October of 1982, they would make their way to World Class Championship Wrestling in Texas where they began their legendary feud with the Von Erichs. According to Terry, David Von Erich was the best worker out of all the brothers. In November, Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy beat Bill Irwin and King Kong Bundy to win the NWA World Class Tag Team titles. In early 1984, the Freebirds made their debut in Japan, where Terry would travel to frequently, working for All Japan Pro Wrestling. Been saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dollar, but it never adds up at all. The Freebirds spent a brief time in the World Wrestling Federation in late 1984 with several matches against the Moondogs but were fired after missing a show and showing up late and drunk, and according to rumors were kicked out of the locker room by Andre the Giant. During the Freebirds' extremely brief WWF run, they had David Wolf as their manager, who was the real-life manager of Cyndi Lauper. Individually, the Freebirds had all their strengths and weaknesses, but together as one unit they were nearly flawless. Although they were a headache at times to the various promoters they worked for, their bad boy image wasn't really an image at all, as they wrestled hard and partied just as hard. Promoters would often overlook their transgressions outside the ring because they filled arenas and made lots of money wherever they went. Gordy, Roberts, and Hayes were heat magnets, and whether it was feuding with the Von Erichs or winning the titles in Georgia or Mid-South territories, the fabulous Freebirds were all about success. Coming around the river banker, the old train was so sane. The very next thing you hear from me, I've been tied to a ball and chain. In 1985,
In 1985, Terry was banned from flying on Northwest Orient Airlines ever again. The lifetime ban was due to his behavior on at least one flight to Japan, where Gordy was intoxicated and was harassing several other passengers, including the airline staff. Because traveling to Japan was vital to Terry's livelihood, the Freebird needed to get himself back on the airline. Terry decided to use another person's name to book a flight. The name he used was a fellow wrestler, Kurt Hennig. When the airline discovered that Kurt Hennig was really Terry Gordy, both were blacklisted from flying with them. It is unknown if Hennig was ever aware that Gordy used his name to book the flight. It is also unknown if he was ever reinstated on Northwest Orient Airlines. The Freebirds would leave Texas and work for Vern Gagne in the AWA for a short time before leaving when Bill Watts started up the UWF. Terry started his feud with Steve Williams and began wrestling more as a singles wrestler and in 1986 became the first UWF champion, which he would hold for six months before forfeiting the title to the one-man gang. In 1986, the Angel of Death became the bodyguard to the Freebirds. He would soon turn on the Freebirds and join Skandar Akbar's Devastation Incorporated, turning the Freebirds into babyfaces. According to the Observer around this time, Terry Gordy blew out his knee so bad that he needed surgery. But when the doctor told him he would be out of action for six months to a year, he informed the doctor that all of a sudden his leg wasn't hurting as bad. They would then bounce between WCCW and Georgia Championship Wrestling. In late 1987, Iceman Parsons joined Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts after Michael Hayes left the Freebirds to help them get revenge on him. Parsons was now known as the Blackbird. Gorgeous Jimmy Garvin would also team with the Freebirds and WCCW and other territories. In 1989, the Freebirds would make their way to WCW in full force and this time officially add Jimmy Garvin to the mix. Together, Garvin and Hayes won the WCW World Tag Team titles, the United States Tag Team titles and the WCW World Six Man titles. Jimmy, being a pilot, talked Terry into training to become a pilot as well until a rough landing during a training session ended with Terry clipping a gas truck with the wing of the plane. The Freebirds concept was heavily derived from the Leonard Skinner song Freebird and the image of Southern Pride evoked by the band. For most of the team's early existence, the song was used as their entrance music in both television and live appearances. On occasion, they would also enter the ring to Willie Nelson's rendition of Georgia On My Mind. The Freebirds are sometimes credited as the first wrestlers to use entrance music, although others including Gorgeous George, use of Pomp and Circumstance, and Big Daddy's use of We Shall Not Be Moved, and Chris Colt's use of Welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper all predate the Freebirds. During the mid-1980s, a number of North American wrestling promotions who licensed copywritten music faced difficulties in continuing those licenses. Other promotions which did not license music were under scrutiny for the practice. Promotions began looking for solutions. The WWF, which hired Jimmy Hart and Jim Johnson in 1985, used their talents to write and produce music under which the copyrights could be controlled by the company. Around the same time, Michael Hayes recorded the song Bad Street USA and released a music video, which included other Freebird members. The song would be used as entrance music for the Freebirds from that point forward, though they would use other songs on occasion. During 1990, Terry would feud with Lex Luger and would run into 1991, but didn't think Lex was a good wrestler. Diamond Dallas Page came to World Championship Wrestling in 1991 as a manager of the fabulous Freebirds, Jimmy Garvin and Michael Hayes. Page managed the Freebirds to a shot to the NWA World Tag Team Championship, where they defeated Doom, Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. Before the match took place, Page unveiled the stable's new road manager, Big Daddy Dink, formerly known as Oliver Humperdink. In keeping with the Freebirds rock and roll band gimmick, he was referred to as their tour manager slash road boss. By this time, Terry was spending most of his time in Japan. At the Clash of Champions, he would face Dr. Death Steve Williams, who he would also form a tag team with while in Japan. And later in 1992, the two would feud with the Steiners and WCW. Welcome 
this time tomorrow Reckon I don't know where I'll be But if it wasn't for that old sheriff I'll be back in Tennessee During a flight to Japan in August of 1993, for one of his frequent All Japan tours, Terry would allegedly take roughly 50 pain pills, resulting in an overdose on the flight that left him in a coma. It would be five days before Terry emerged from the coma, unfortunately with permanent brain damage. Whether or not this damage could have been avoided had the incident not happened on a flight across the world is nothing but speculation. But one thing for certain is that the once imposing muscle of the fabulous Freebirds would now be a shell of his former self. Friends in the business would go on to note that the previously happy Terry Gordy was now more calm, almost in a constant state of confusion, which ended his relationship with All Japan Pro Wrestling. During a shoot interview with RF Video, Terry apologized to his fans for the incident. During 1994, he would only wrestle a handful of matches for the Global Wrestling Federation. In February 1995, Terry made his first appearance as the executioner, teaming with Mike Bell losing to the Smoking Guns. He would be sent to Smoky Mountain Wrestling, teaming with Tommy Rich as a militia. He would feud with Brad Armstrong and even won the Smoky Mountain Heavyweight Championship, defeating Armstrong. A month later, he dropped the title back to Armstrong in a country whipping match. Terry left SMW before it closed its doors at the end of the year. During 1995, he would also return to Japan, now working for IWA, and had several matches with Cactus Jack. In 1996, Gordy appeared in Extreme Championship Wrestling to challenge Raven for the ECW World Heavyweight title as an internationally recognized number one contender. He also wrestled Bam Bam Bigelow at Ultimate Jeopardy in what was billed as the Battle of the Bam Bams. Terry lost the match due to the outside interference from the Eliminators. He was then called back up to the WWF. In 1996, he teamed with Mankind, both managed by Paul Bearer, and feuded with The Undertaker. The Executioner came to the ring under a mask and carrying an axe as Paul Bearer's hired assassin. His finishing move was a deadly Asiatic spike. He made his TV debut at the In Your House pay-per-view Buried Alive when he interfered in The Undertaker's Buried Alive match with Mankind, hitting The Undertaker with a shovel and burying him with the help of Mankind and several other wrestlers. However, at In Your House 12, It's Time, The Undertaker defeated The Executioner in an Armageddon Rules match. Dave Meltzer gave the match two and a half stars. For anyone that knew Terry, it was kind of sad and tough to watch as Terry was considered a wrestling prodigy. But at this point, he was just a shell of his former self. Undertaker, growing up in Texas and a Freebirds fan, wanted so much to try and help Terry. But the plane incident in 1993 was still greatly affecting him. According to Bruce Pritchard, it was a sad scene and hard to watch. Terry left the promotion shortly afterwards. His final televised appearance was on January 12, 1997 on WWF Superstars when he lost to Goldust, after which Paul Bearer turned on him by hitting him with his urn. He was advertised to be one of the 30 participants in the 1997 Royal Rumble match, but did not make his appearance. He returned to WWF one last time in a house show as the Executioner on April 28, 1998, losing to Wellington Wilkins. According to several sources, Terry was brought in as a favor to Michael Hayes who was working backstage, but he wasn't the same in the ring and to protect his legacy, they hid his identity in case things didn't work out. Had Gordy been able to compete at a high level, there would have been the opportunity to later unmask. Terry returned to Japan, working for International Wrestling Association of Japan, where he wrestled in death matches, mainly working in tag teams. He left IWA Japan in 1997. In 1998, he returned to Japan for the final time working for Wrestle Association R. After leaving the WWF in Japan, Terry worked in the independent circuit. On February 21, 1998, he teamed with Dan Severn in a losing effort to Doug Gilbert and Dutch Mantel at the Eddie Gilbert Memorial Show for IWA Mid-South. Terry would reunite with Hayes as they fought Glenn Kulka and J.R. Smooth to a no contest for Power Pro Wrestling on May 28, 1999. He wrestled his last match returning to IWA Japan in February of 2001. Terry died of a heart attack caused by a blood clot on July 16, 2001. 
In 2014, he was inducted into the Southern Wrestling Hall of Fame. A year later, he was also inducted into the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum. And on April 2nd, 2016, he was inducted by his son into the WWE Hall of Fame as part of the Fabulous Freebirds. According to Jim Ross on his Grilling JR podcast, Terry's drug issues were one of the main reasons he didn't have a big singles run during the 1990s. Jim Ross would state, There was nothing he couldn't do in the ring. Terry was extraordinary. When he was 15 or 16, he was already the size of a grown man and already well beyond his experience level. He was a natural. Anything to do with wrestling, he would have been a success. Terry Gordy would have been a huge success because he was that athletic big man that promoters loved. Big athletes had turned heads in airports. His personality was bigger than life. Not denigrating Buddy or Michael Hayes, but the Freebird three-man team, Terry was the star of the show. He was as good as super heavyweight, or 300 pound guys I ever saw. He was extraordinary. Nikita Koloff recalled his first and only trip to Japan. He said he was at a bar after the matches with Terry and claimed that Terry became a different person when he became drunk. He would get rowdy, then angry, then uncontrollable. On this occasion, Terry started by throwing drink glasses at the wall. After that, he took a fire extinguisher and started spraying the contents throughout the bar. He then threw the extinguisher out the window. Realizing that the police were called, I dragged him out of the bar and back to the hotel. Terry Gordy was a big star in Japan, and it was Nikita who took the brunt of the heat from the Japanese officials after they were notified about the incident. Nikita claimed he was never asked back to do another tour after that. Michael Hayes would record a song called Freebird Road, a heartfelt tribute to his best friend, and film part of the video at the grave of Terry Gordy. The reaction to Hayes' tribute was overwhelmingly positive. Many WWE superstars view the song as a fitting honor for the legendary grappler, and many who competed with and against Terry were also touched by the song. Most importantly to Hayes was the reaction from the Gordy family. With Michael Hayes as the mouthpiece, Buddy Roberts as the technician, and Terry Gordy the muscle who could do it all in the ring, and among many wrestling fans, top 10 list of greatest in-ring performers. Even in Japan where they rarely pay tribute to American wrestlers who passed away, Terry was given a 10 bell salute. That was the story of Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Buy yourself a postcard so you can see the lights of town. Find yourself a country girl, keep quiet and settle down.